So today we're going to go over P5. Uh, this lesson is called the Cartesian plane. However, it's the same exact thing as a coordinate plane. So you can use them, those two words interchangeably. It does not matter. With these coordinate planes, um, there are different quadrants. You have different axes. You have an origin. Your origin is where the two axes meet. You have an x-axis. You have a y-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal axis, the one that goes side to side. The y-axis is the vertical axis, the axis that goes up and down. Those two axes cross at what's called the origin. Your origin is always the ordered pair 0, 0. Within these, or with what these two axes cross and form, are four different quadrants. Starting at the top right-hand quadrant, you have quadrant 1. Then going to the left on the top is quadrant 2. Down on the left is quadrant 3. And down on the right is quadrant 4. If you start at quadrant 1 and go counterclockwise, it gives you 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. The ordered pairs that are in quadrant 1, both your x and your y are going to be positive. The ordered pairs from quadrant 2, your x is going to be negative, your y is going to be positive. The ordered pairs from quadrant 3, both of them are going to be negatives. And then the, the ordered pairs from quadrant 4, your x is positive, your y is negative. You might use this a little later on. Today, our lesson is going to solely focus on distance formula, midpoint formula, equations of a circle. Okay? So some of these you'll be graphing on a coordinate plane, which is what you're going to use this for, okay? Um, just to reiterate, when you're graphing ordered pairs, you're going to start from your origin, go right or left first with the x value, then go up or down with your y value, and then plot the point. So you'll always go right or left first from your origin before you go up or down. The first formula that we are going to look at within today's lesson is your distance formula. You have to memorize this formula. It's going to help you figure out a lot of different types of questions here. So your distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So you'll be given two ordered pairs and asked to find the distance between the two. Use one of those x, those order pairs as x1, y1. Use the other as x2, y2. Plug them into your formula. If we look at the first example, it's asking you to find the distance between the points negative 2, 1, and 3, 4, and to write your answer in simplest radical form. So once again, your distance formula is... The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So from here, identify what you want to use as your x1, your y1, your x2, your y2. I would use the negative 2, 1 as x1, y1 and the 3, 4 as x2, y2. So from here, you're plugging these values in. You're going to have the square root of 3 minus negative 2 squared plus 4 minus 1 squared. Your double negatives in that 3 minus negative 2 turn into 3 plus 2. So that's going to give you 3 plus 2, which is 5. And then the 4 minus 1 is 3. So that's the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. Your 5 squared is 25. Your 3 squared is 9. So that simplifies to give you the square root of 34. Now, 34 is divisible by 2. It would give you 17. So you cannot simplify the square root of 34. You will leave it as the square root of 34. 
If we look at our next example, we're finding the distance between the points negative 3, 7, and 9, negative 4. We're writing our answer in simplest radical form. Once again, your distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So this is going to use x1, y1 as point A, x2, y2 as point B, or with point B. So that means that we're going to have our distance is equal to the square root of 9 minus negative 3 squared plus negative 4 minus 7 squared. The double negatives turn into positives, so 9 plus 3 is 12. The negative 4 minus 7 is going to give us negative 11. We simplify this to be the square root of 144 plus 121. Your 144 and your 121 are going to have to add together. The 1 and the 4 gives us 5. 4 and 6, or sorry, 4 and 2 is 6. 1 and 1 is 2. So that's the square root of 265. 265 is divisible by 5. 5 goes into 26 5 times with 1 left over. 5 goes into 15 3 times. 53 is not divisible by anything. So this does not simplify. It is just the square root of 265. For our next example, we're finding the distance between 5, 8, and negative 3, negative 6. So again, our distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I'm going to use x1, y1 for the first point, which is c, x2, y2 for that d point. So this is going to give us the square root of negative 3 minus 5 squared plus negative 6 minus 8 squared. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. The negative 6 minus 8 is negative 14. From here, that negative 8 squared is 64. The 14 squared, do 14 times 14. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 1 plus 1 is 5. Add your 0 down. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. So add these, and that's 196. From here, you're going to add the 64 with the 196. So that gives you the square root of 260. 260 is 26 and 10. 10 is 2 and 5. 26 is 2 and 13. The two twos group up. So that gives you a distance of 2 square root 3 times, or sorry, 13 times 5 which is 65, so 2 square root 65. So the next part that we're going to look at is using our midpoint formula. Our midpoint formula, you're going to be given two points, and you're going to be told to find the point that's in the middle of them. So you'll use your x1, y1, and your x2, y2 still, but instead, for your midpoint, you're going to find your x value, by taking the sum of your x values from the two points and dividing it by 2. Your y value from the order pair that is your midpoint, you're going to find by taking the two y values, adding them, and dividing by 2. So sum of x divided by 2 comma sum of y divided by 2. If we look at example 6, we have to find the midpoint of the line segment joining the points negative 5, 3, and 9. 3. So 
again, our midpoint is going to equal x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Plus. I'm going to use that negative 5, negative 3 as x1, y1, and the 9, 3 as x2, y2. So that's going to give us negative 5 plus 9 over 2 and negative 3 plus 3 over 2. Negative 5 plus 9 is 4 over 2. The negative 3 plus 3 is 0 over 2. 4 over 2 simplifies to be 2. 0 over 2 simplifies to be 0. So that midpoint is just the ordered pair 2, 0. For our next example, we're given the ordered pairs A, which is negative 3, 4, and B, which is 19, 8, and told to find the midpoint. So again, our formula for midpoint, x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. First point A, we're going to use as x1, y1. B, we're going to use as x2, y2. So that means we're going to have negative 3 plus 19 over 2 and 4 plus 8 over 2. Your negative 3 plus 19 gives you 16 over 2. Your 4 plus 8 gives you 12 over 2. So these both simplify to give you 8 comma 6. For the next one that we're going to look at, you are given the ordered pairs negative 8, 5, and 7, 4, and told to find the midpoint. So again, our midpoint formula is just y1 plus y, or sorry, x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. I'm going to use c as x1, y1 and d as x2, y2. So this is going to give us negative 8 plus 7 over 2 and 5 plus 4 over 2. Your negative 8 plus 7 gives you negative 1 over 2. Your 5 plus 4 gives you 9 over 2. Your negative 1 half does not simplify any further. Your 9 over 2 does not simplify any further. You're going to keep it as a or as an improper fraction in simplest form. So that 9 over 2, leave as 9 over 2, do not turn it into 4 and 1 half. We're going to go over the equation of a circle. Um, these equations of a circle, you need a couple things when you're working with them. You need something called a center, which is the middle point within that circle. That is this, the ordered pair H comma K. So X is H, Y is K. You also need the radius. So the distance between that center point and one of your outside points or your end points. Um, once you have the radius and the center, you can plug them into your standard form of the circle equation, which is just x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Again, the h comes from the x value from your center. The k comes from your y value from your center. Once you have that, you just plug it in and simplify. Any double negatives turn into positives. Um, and then your radius, again, you square it. So if we look at an example, it tells you that the point 3, 4 lies on a circle whose center is at negative 1, 2. Write the standard form of the equation of this circle. So the first thing we're going to look at is a circle that has a center of 1, 2. That point 3, 4 lies on the circle. So it's somewhere on the outside of the circle. So let's say it's here. What you're finding is the radius, which is the distance between those two points. 
to find your radius, you can use your distance formula, which is just the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. We're going to use the two points that are given to us because one of them is your center, one of them is the outside point. So we're going to use 3, 4, and negative 1, 2. I'm going to use the 3, 4 as your x1 and your y1. The x2 will be negative 1, meaning y2 will be 2. So that's going to give you your radius is equal to the square root of negative 1 minus 3 squared plus 2 minus 4 squared. Simplifying underneath that radical, we're going to have the square root of negative 4 squared plus negative 2 squared. From here, you want to square that negative 4, you want to square that negative 2. So it's going to give you r is equal to the square root of 16 plus 4. From here, add the 16 and the 4, and that gives you the square root of 20. Now, in questions before this, I told you to simplify that square root of 20. In this case, I do not want you to because you're going to plug that into your equation of a circle, and you're going to square that. So that just means that you need to use your center and your radius. So we said the center is the point negative 1, 2, and our radius is the square root of 20. We said from the section or the one before this that your equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So from here, plug in your values. Your h is the x from your center, your k is your y from your center, and r is your radius. So that just means you're going to have x minus negative 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to the square root of 20 squared. So from here, you're just simplifying. The double negatives turn into a positive to give you x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to that square root of 20 squared because the power is the same as its index. Cancels out the radical and the power to just give you the 20. So for your next one, you're told that you have the point negative 4, 6 that lies on a circle whose center is at 3, 1. You're still doing the same thing, writing the equation of the circle in standard form. So once again, if we have a circle and that middle point is the point 3, 1, your outside point is going to be negative 4, 6. So you're going to find the distance between the two. So to first find the distance or the radius, you're going to do the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So from this, if we plug our values in from those two ordered pairs, we are going to have r is equal to the square root. I'm going to use that negative 4, 6 as x1. So your x2 is going to be 3 minus negative 4 squared plus 1 minus 6 squared. Your double negatives here are going to turn into positives. So you're going to do 3 plus 4 to give you the square root of 7 squared plus negative 5 squared. Your 7 squared is 49. Your negative 5 squared is 25. So you're going to add those. And you're going to have the square root of 74. Again, you're not simplifying that. You're just going to plug that into with your center. 
into your equation of a circle. So your equation of a circle, or here, your center, is the ordered pair 3, 1. Your radius is the square root of 74. Your equation of a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Your h is the 3, k is the 1, r is the square root of 74. So it's going to give you x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to the square root of 74 squared. The power cancels out the radical, and that just leaves you with x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 74.